In this video, I'm going to show you how I make my round tabletops. I hope you enjoy! The first step is going to be milling each and every board that we're going to be using for the tabletop. I run the face of the board through the joiner as many times as needed to get it perfectly flat. And then I do the same thing for one of the sides. As you can see here, this is a board before milling and here's the board after milling. I do 1 16th inch passes which leaves it super smooth and makes sanding a whole lot easier. After running the boards through the joiner, I then proceed to run them through the planer on the opposite side. The planer will match the other side, making it perfectly flat and even thickness throughout. And after running everything through the planer, I will then run everything through the table saw to make it nice and square. After I mill all of my boards up using my jointer, planer, and table saw, I lay them out in the direction that I think looks the best. So if I have any knot areas, I try to evenly space those out so that way they're not all in one area. Um, so like this board, I flipped it so that way all of the knots wouldn't be on this side. But this is going to be the top. So it is going to be a six foot round top. And let me show you what I did. So I measured where the center point is and I marked that with a little circle and X. And then I went around and marked where my three foot radius is on all of the seams. So that way now I can go back with a square and mark where I want to cut my dominoes. So I'm going to do that now and then cut the dominoes out and then we will get it in the clamps. All right, so now we have labeled all of our boards one through 12 and I have drawn all of the spots where I'm going to cut my dominoes. Um, and yeah, so next is going to cut all the dominoes and I will show you my domino joiner that I have. It is the best thing that I've personally found building my tables, but you're welcome to use whatever method you like, but the domino is my preferred method. So here is my domino. Yes, it has been put through the ringer, has paint on it. It's a little dusty, I need to clean it up, but this thing is a workhorse and I use it multiple times every single week. Um, so I'm gonna show you, I have it set to 90 degrees because we are just gonna be cutting 90 degree slots in here so that way we get a nice flat top. Um, and for this piece of wood, I have it set to uh, the 25 and that way it puts it right in the center of this piece of wood. So nice support and stability. And then I have the um, big boy vacuum again, sorry, it is dusty, the CT48. E, and I like it because it has the Bluetooth. So my domino is plugged directly into the vacuum. And of course the hose is in the vacuum. And so whenever I go to turn it on, so here we go. When I go turn on, you'll hear the vacuum comes on. And then I turn it off and the vacuum turns off. So I really like that feature. Um, so whatever tool you have plugged into it, it will recognize when it comes on and it will automatically turn on. That way you don't have to keep going back and forth, turning it on, turning it off. Um, so that's a really cool feature I like about that vacuum. Um, so now what we're going to do is cut all of these dominoes. After cutting all the slots for the dominoes, I then proceed to the glue up. I evenly spread out my Titebond Ultimate Wood Glue using my wood roller that I got off of Amazon. 
After spreading the glue evenly, I then add the dominoes and use a rubber mallet to hammer each board into the next. This is a really tedious process, but it ensures a nice flat top. Once the last piece is in place, I tighten the clamps and let it sit for 12 hours. So, after I take it out of the clamps, I went ahead and stained the underside um, before I cut out and do everything for the top side. So, as you can see, I haven't started sanding yet, but what I did do is get, where did I put it? This little guy. So it's just a scraper and I scraped off all of the glue bubbles from the squeeze out. So that way it's less sanding I have to do. And then I'm just going to hit it with 80 grit first. I went ahead and used Starbond to fill in any small um, imperfections or knots in the top and going to sand with 80 grit first and then we'll move to 120 grit and then 150 grit and then 220 grit before we apply the finish. After I sand with the 80 grit I pull out my circle jig that I got from Woodhaven and I mounted my plunge router to it and I have to make one eighth inch passes. And then I use my shop vac to vacuum out as much as possible out of the groove. That way it's just less mess and do that until the entire round caught, caught, oh my gosh, the entire round top is cut out. So this is the first pass and we are going to do several more passes until it is cut out. Whenever I'm getting close to cutting all the way through, I just go around and cut using my jigsaw little slits every like quarter, so eight total. And I only do this because since I am cutting it on its base, these will weigh down as I cut through and we don't want them to hang off and then rip out the underside of the top. So whenever we come through, that piece will fall off. We'll keep coming through, then these pieces will fall off. And so that way there's no stress on the outer piece hanging onto the top to rip out from the bottom. Um, you don't have to do this if you are cutting on a assembly table using a foam base, but since I'm cutting on the base itself, I like to do this. So now this is pretty smooth, not a lot of sanding we have to do here. We will sand the underside to get all these little hairies off and then we will do a small chamfer um, routed on the edge of this to give it a nice finished look. So now that I got this side sanded down with 80, I got my trim router and I have a chamfer bit and I have it just enough. I don't want to do too big of a chamfer bit, just enough to give it a little detailing and look nice. Now that I got everything cleaned up, before we start doing our final sandings, 
I like to water pop it, so I just lightly spray it with water all over. And what this does is it raises the grain, so that way whenever you do the final finish sandings, it will not come back up whenever you go to put your finish on. Um, I usually use water-based products, and so if you don't do this step and then you go straight into your water-based finish, then it will essentially raise the grain just like this is doing, and you will have to do a lot more sanding in between your poly coats. So I like to do it before I apply the stains, and in that way, I don't have to run into any issues and it is nice and glass smooth when I'm done. Well, she is a wrap. And I am loving this ebony stain. And we got the metal base and then it dusted off. But got my logo up underneath there. I love it. It looks so good. And here's the finished product. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe as I'll be coming out with more videos, especially once my shop is built. Also, be sure to go follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Thanks for watching.